invite Mr. Travis Bartley to speak with us. All right, great. So Ms. Hilton, I think about this time, um, we should be having a little interview, right? Yes. And this interview is so special. I want to tell you a little bit about it. We have gone all the way to South Africa uh, just to share with you how international youth in environmental initiatives is, how international this is. And today it is truly a pleasure to be speaking to um, Delsha and Romario Valentine from South Africa. Now Delsha doesn't have one of those um, long, interesting African names with lots of clicks, right? So Delsha is Delsha Moodley and Romario Valentine. Uh, mother and son, and we are so happy to have both of them with us here today in Jamaica. So I want all of you to welcome Delsha and Romario to Jamaica virtually. This is their very first time. The next time we'll, we'll fly them out in person, right? Well, welcome. Please drop all your, your emojis, your welcomes in the chat um, so that they can really feel that Jamaican energy because today is Jamaica day so you definitely need to show them the Jamaican energy. Let me tell you a little bit about Romario though. So Romario, I'm not going to tell you his age because I'm going to ask that a little later. But let me tell you a little bit about Romario. To date, Romario has actually coordinated himself more than 175 beach cleanups. Right now, Romario is a student of the environment, but he is also dedicated to many other things. Romario swims, Romario surfs, Romario is big on Twitter. Um, Romario is a major personality on Twitter and. In 2021, he was actually awarded the action, I think it's Action for Nature's Young Eco Hero Award. So what were you doing when you were the age that Romario looks like? I won't tell you because we're going we're gonna to ask him. All right. So just about now, I want Delsha and Romario to unmute your microphone. Don't worry, it's the world of Zoom. Hmm? Oh, you can't? Oh, come, wait, let's fix that. So we're gonna make you Delsha, oh yeah. And Romario, thought we did that earlier. Go ahead. Yeah. Are you yes, hearing us John. now? Yes. Great, we're hearing you, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having us. We are so happy to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What time is it down there in South Africa? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, it's 11 p.m. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and night. We really <laughs> appreciate it. You know, yes. we, we, we just want to get to know both of you a little bit better. And, you know, our first question is to Romario. Romario, how, how old are you? Because we've been talking I'm for a while. I'm 10 years old and happy Jamaica Day. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years old. Wow. So what were you guys doing um, for all of our high school students? What were you doing when you were 10 years old, right? Think about that a little bit. And Delsha. How long have you been supporting these initiatives and, and what support do you really give to Romario as he carries out his role as a young eco war hero? Um, 
Travis, to be honest, Romario has always been ambitious and loved nature from a young age. And um, so technically, I would say probably from the age of one. And now he's turning 11. So about, yeah, it's almost 10 years. But obviously, he's been very active for about five. And um, I would say I'm his manager and assistant. And academically, I teach him all about the environment and um, we do creative art together, eco art. Um, he started painting when he was five with me. He loves to paint endangered birds from around the world. And uh, I help him with setting up his interviews, uh, my network for him. I carry his bags on the beach. So technically I'm the assistant that doesn't get paid. <laughs> And um, I assist him in any way I can to, you know, elevate him. And obviously, I'm also a big part for his mental well-being, which is very important for me, for him to be optimistic and, and happy. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot, Delsha. Thank you so much. We a lot together as well. <laughs> so you, you've said a lot of assisting so we hear a lot of assist assist so definitely what we understand is that Romario takes um the lead in coordinating these activities so Romario tell us uh how long have you been involved what are some of the things that you have been working on recently and over the past what 10 years or five years <laughs> <laughs> I've always cared for nature and our planet. However, when I was six years old, I was an orca in a school play. I did research with my mother and I discovered that orcas were critically endangered. Yeah. I decided to do something about it by cleaning the beach weekly. And planting trees. <laughs> so orcas, um, you decided that cleaning the beach would help orcas. Did you understand what that meant? Why did you think cleaning the beach would help the orca? Um, I might not be helping them. I am cleaning the beach, but it is going to help them a bit because if orcas eat the trash, they will suffocate and die. <laughs> so if I clean up all the trash on the beach, no orcas will be dead, even though they're not on the beach. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. And that was a bonus question. So I wanted to see how well you handled that. Excellent. Thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now, the, the, the projects that you're working on right now. In my community, I've cleaned the beach over 200 times. I help endangered birds and I plant critically endangered trees like pepperbark, also known as Wabergia salutaris. They are medicinal and I want to prevent them from extinction. Mm. Mm. Wow. And I noticed mm -hmm. from, you know, just our interaction on Twitter that you... You don't only, because you're in Durban, in South Africa down there, but I realize that you also have um, friends, you know, who also do cleanups and tree planting activities around Africa. And so you check up on your plants from time to time in other countries. Yes. Right? Excellent. So Delsha, how, how important do you think it is that parents and teachers and other adults involved in the lives of these young um, environmentalists here today, how important do you think it is that they get this support that you're giving, Romario? Well, um, I think if parents, teachers, and adults find a, a unique talent in their children or students, I think they should nurture them from a young age because it's of paramount importance that their gifts are nurtured. And I believe children are the future and can achieve anything with drive, optimism, and confidence. And naturally, I'm an optimistic person, so I like to drive this in Romario as well, because I believe when you're confident and you have perseverance, you can achieve anything regardless of all the challenges you are going through. And uh, like I would say, I usually call Romario my little visionary, and um, it pushes me as well. And, you know, I'm learning as well at the same time because 
my occupation is financial accounting, but I've now also had to become an environmental assistant as well. <laughs> so it's, um, it's actually opened my eyes as well. And um, we having fun, let's just put it that way. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we're having lots of fun. <laughs> You're having lots of fun? Yeah, that's excellent. And you're documenting that as you taking photos, you know, making sure that you capture these moments. And that's that's beautiful. Keep that going. Keep that going. Have you received any support from anybody at all in South Africa or internationally for your projects? Yes, uh, the UNCCD and the different journalists. Yeah. Yes, I've been received by the UNCCD and different uh, journalists. Yes. Journalists. And, uh, we also have a surprise. Um, a publisher spotted his story, an article online, a few uh, last year at some stage. So they're working with him to produce an environmental book for children aged seven to 12. And it's gonna be through the eyes of Romario. So they're working very closely with him. And uh, he's obviously narrating his, his story, but his story is about how you can make change from where you are. So it's like teaching children to become an eco-warrior because Romara is, um, you know, we've had a few challenges learning on the environment and how to make change. And Romara wants other children, similar ages, to start where they are, make a plan and get on with things. And it's, it's an amazing book. So it's gonna be out um, end of the year, I think around September or so. So we're looking forward to that. So that's what he's busy working on at the moment uh, with some scientists and ecologists as well to verify and make sure everything's perfect. <laughs> and will yeah. that be will that be a physical hard copy book or will that be an ebook? How could at we get moment, a copy? At the moment, it's going to be a hard copy, and uh, obviously they will expand and see how well the book does. But I think. Because I've been seeing, you know, some of the drafts that they've been doing with him. I think it's going to be so informative. And, uh, you know, for other children, especially those who don't have access to the Internet and this type of education. And uh, as you know, Romara is very diverse. He loves the whole world. And if he can plant a tree in every single country, I, I think that would be his ambition. So hopefully you'll see us in Jamaica one of these fine days and uh, let him plant his tree. Um, <laughs> he's very ambitious, let's put it that way. So and yes, at the moment, it's going to be a hard copy for now. But I think as it progresses, we'll get the ebooks and other options um, available because it is his first time and we're trying to make sure it's done uh, perfectly. Yeah. Excellent. Um, we, we, we have people asking questions. They're very much interested in, in the work both of you are doing down there in um, South Africa. But we, that, that's a good segue, Delsha, into our next question about Romario's goal. Um, so Romario, what's your goal as an eco-warrior? What's your big goal? Hmm. I want to help other children become eco-warriors and leave a legacy for generations to come. I'd like to encourage the youth to find innovative ways to plant nature. We need to create a better sustainable future to plant trees, recycle, reuse, and only buy the things we need. Yeah. We are the change that we seek. When we take care of nature, we take care of ourselves. Thank you. That's beautiful, man. When we take, so guys, write that down, write that down, write that down. When we take care of nature, we take care of ourselves. I love that. Romario, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Delsha, um, how do you think his work as an environmental conservationist has really contributed to his secular education? I would say it's definitely made him more interested in the STEM subjects. It's also made him to try and be innovative and learn about other countries, other cultures, and you know all these global environmental problems that other countries are facing. And um, like I said, obviously at the moment, his major uh, global program is planting trees in different countries. 
uh, so far has done 455 in 24 countries around the world. We would love to plant a tree in Jamaica. That's definitely one because we have in Brazil, we have in Costa Rica and uh, Canada, England. America. So, you know, we, he's, he's trying to give something back to the whole world and hopefully these trees will supply, you know, oxygen or medicinal or fruits for, um, you know, animals and human beings and, um, you know, help with erosion, land degradation. So he's trying to address all these uh, problems and uh, you know, that's the best way he can at this young age. And um, he's planted trees with other children his age as well. He's taught them about the type of tree they're planting. And I think by making you know, trees out of eco art with all these plastic and stuff, it's also helped him to understand the trees better. So art actually plays an important role in educating children. So that, that's the practical side where I'm hands on with him. And once he has his idea and he sketches out his plan, then I got to buy all the stuff that's maybe the glues and stuff, but uh, uses all the pollutants he collects that he can recycle and reuse. And, you know, um, not, not many people know that trash can also equal wealth. So if the youth in Jamaica you know, can start also creating products that can also be sold to, you know, tourists coming in, um, you know, starting their own recycling plants, you know, it, it would be something amazing for uh, the children there. And um, like I said, for me, it's very important for Amara to understand what he's doing and the impact of what he's doing. And uh, he's a very humble child and very helpful. And he wants to learn. He wants to learn about every single country. He's always asking me this, and then I've got to be doing research and everything. And um, that's what's special about him. So I think there is something special about Romario, not just coming from a mom's point of view, but um, just from what he's doing and the things that he tells me he wants to achieve and, and do as well. So I think he's very passionate about the youth. I mean, he spoke about how will other children understand about education? Because some children live by the beach and they have no clue why the beach is important. Um, you know, we get 50%, I think, oxygen from the beach and uh, marine birds, you know, they endangered or becoming extinct and we need them to with the coral, you know, they, they droppings or the guano help uh, with the coral reef. And obviously, you know, uh, that's where Jamaica comes into play. So I think, Practical schools need to do more practicals, make it more fun, you know, involve the parents as well and show them that, you know, trash for me equals wealth as well. So I think if we try to help them and also mental well being, you know, we don't just scare monger them all the time. I always want them to look at the positive side, like what can we do, you know? So I think that's. Um, yeah, and make more kids become entrepreneurs in, in their youth and get more support from NGOs to, to help them get started. I think that's, that's what they need. They need the support, just like how his book came along. You know, we were surprised uh, that a publisher thought Romario, you know, was interesting. And um, yeah, we're very grateful for all the opportunities and uh, we're going to try our best. He's a perfectionist as well. He works really hard in between his sport and everything else that he does, you know, so, and he's really dedicated. And I think, as you can see on Twitter, you know, and he tries his best to communicate with people and, uh, you know, any support, like I said, I'm there. Yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> I have two questions before the, the moderator kicks me off the program, right? Um, Romario, what in, who inspires you? Who inspires you to do what you do? Um, my mom, Lewis Hamilton, and Wangari Matai inspires me. <laughs> that, that, that's, a, that's a variety of inspiration. It's extremely nice. <laughs> very nice, very nice. And, and in five years, um, how do you envision Earth? The Earth we have, how do you envision it in five years? If you were to draw it. Um, I'd say there'll be more birds 
less animals being critically endangered and extinct mm. and it would be beautiful and there won't be so much people just a little bit more. <laughs> hey, that's that's beautiful Romario thank you and I think especially at this time we we really would love to see you draw that earth for us and have it come true in five years thank you both thank you Delsha thank you Romario thank you so we have some questions for you so we're going to take those later on I'm also going to put a link where you can learn a little bit more about the work Delsha and Romario are doing down there in South Africa in the chat so you can click on that and take a look at it thank you both and we'll talk some more thank you so much bye <laughs> thank you so much mr barton thank you miss delish